Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Jay Clayton, who is a professor of English and also serves as the director of the Curb Center for Art, Enterprise, and Public Policy at Vanderbilt University. Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, Aaron. It's great to be here. So I, of course, have been, uh, you know, very excited that I've actually been able to be at the Curb Center and see some of the extraordinary work that you do firsthand. The center is one of our wonderful creative partners of the show. Um, so I thought we'd just start off for just anyone in our audience who isn't familiar with the center. Could you kind of share what the center's work is, is all about and the scope of the work that you do? Sure, Aaron, and your visit uh, several years ago was, was a great event and really inspired uh, our community. Uh, the Curb Center is an independently endowed center with two main interrelated focus, focuses. Um, first of all, we're an arts policy research center. We, we look at how the arts can shape public policy in areas not can connected with the arts, and also how public policy at the national and governmental level uh, affects the arts. So we, uh, in that sense, we're like a think tank for the arts. Um, but our other mission, which uh, is takes up a lot of our time, is the uh, fostering creativity that goes beyond the arts to all parts of the university, the sciences, the engineering, the medical school, and that reaches beyond the boundaries of the campus. Uh, so that we, we fund arts projects, we run them, we uh, foster creativity in all kinds of unusual interdisciplinary areas. Awesome. So it's just extraordinary work. And just before, because I want to talk about some of that actual programming and especially your Art of Healing um, initiative, but just to quickly touch on the research piece, as you think back to even the history of the center, is there any kind of aspect or area of the research that stands out to you that, you know, this was something that we really looked into that, you know, really had a significant impact. Is there something that stands out for you? So uh, we, uh, the, the center was founded now more than 15 years ago by Bill Ivey, who was former director of the National Endowment for the Arts. And he set us on a course of doing primary research on how governmental policy affects the arts and have produced many important studies over the year, uh, years. Today, we have a team of over 20 creative staff and arts policy researchers. Uh, and Alex Frenette is our associate director, and he heads up the research on arts policy. And he's, he's uh, assisted by a great postdoc named Jill Gualteri. Whereas I work on how the arts can affect other aspects of society, particularly medicine and science. Uh, and so we have uh, funded initiatives by the NEA and the um, the National Institute for, for Health that enable us to do all kinds of research. Right now, uh, Alex is looking into how internships in the arts affect people, young people uh, starting out in their career. Um, I'm, I'm looking at how the uh, how television, film, uh, the the arts generally, social media affect people's attitudes towards genetic privacy. So you, it's the impact the, of the arts on uh, society's attitudes towards science that I study. Wow. 
Absolutely fantastic. Um, and so to kind of delve into this more, um, you have this initiative, this kind of really response, Art of Healing, uh, coming out of the pandemic and all of that. Just wondering if you could share with us kind of what the nature of that is, and especially the scope of it, because it has a significant impact. Oh, it's a huge project, and it was um, originated and is being run by Kim Kane, who is our senior administrative manager. One of the great things about the Curb Center is that everybody in the center, uh, whether they're staff or faculty or students, are all involved in running their own projects uh, and helping one another. So, so Kim had the idea for this uh, uh, during the pandemic, and it was a, a way to showcase how the arts can help us uh, live through this horrific event and overcome isolation, foster well-being. Uh, what it is, is it's a juried show featuring, featuring nearly 200 works of art uh, from 168 artists across the campus in the Nashville community. Uh, we also have art from uh, the WHO's national headquarters and art from five featured artists. Uh, and it's been exhibited all across the city and in uh, hospitals at uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center, Meharry Medical Center, Hundred Oaks Clinics, uh, the Divinity School at Vanderbilt, just everywhere you can imagine, plus uh, dozens of community organizations. Uh, and we, uh, we have a daily art campaign where we feature a single piece of art on social media each day. Uh, but probably the most important part of the whole undertaking is uh, daily, uh, excuse me, weekly events that involve the community in things like an aphasia workshop, an uh, arts making series for uh, people suffering from aphasia or a uh, creative workshop, uh, a creative writing workshop weekly for cancer patients in, at, at the Vanderbilt Hospital or can cancer survivors, uh, photo, photo photography workshops, uh, mask making, uh, jazz on the move in public schools. I mean, you can just see the range. I mean, that's only a, a smattering of all the events that they're planning. And these are going to go on for a year and a half. Wow. It's, it is truly amazing. And, you know, having seen some of this work that just connects the arts and healing and, and just shows in such a demonstrative way how much the arts can impact someone whether they're in recovery, whether they're going through uh, a particular crisis or, or critical situation. Um, it's really amazing. And especially a lot of the data that seems to come out about the impact of the arts, that it's not just kind of an anecdotal, oh, we think people feel better, but really this demonstrative, specifically data-driven impact uh, that the arts have as it relates to healing. You know, that that's the what unites the two two parts of our mission. Uh, we don't just foster creativity and put on arts events and and uh, enable our community organizations to uh, to uh, bring people together, but we also study its impact. Uh, we really want to be able to show that the arts can make a difference in society uh, and not just an economics di uh, difference. I, I think that so much research uh, has been devoted to trying to show the economic impact of the arts on a city. Uh, that's important, very important, but uh, the arts have other uh, demonstrable impacts that can be measured. Uh, and that's where our uh, arts research side comes into play to uh, take these events and, uh, and show, prove uh, through data-driven research that it's not just anecdotal, but that the arts make a difference. Uh -huh. It is just, it's it, especially I think at this time in our society, for our country, for the world, 
this role of understanding um, the impact that the arts can have uh, is just phenomenal. And the fact that you're tackling it from both sides of the equation uh, is really just extraordinary. A testament to your leadership, to the work of the center. Uh, it really is just amazing. Uh, unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but I always like to ask, you know, my guests, you know, when you're in a leadership role like this, and especially as you described, you know, coordinating with dozens of community organizations, hundreds of artists, huge impact, research studies, et cetera, um, there's got to be some tough days. There's got to be some times when there are some challenges that, uh, you know, are, are uh, that, that can definitely cause some intensity. And just wondering, how do you as a leader kind of address those? Is there anywhere you go to for, for strength in those moments, for inspiration yourself? My staff. I mean, we've got the best group of people uh, in, in the country, in my opinion. Uh, that, you know, they, they give me uh, strength every day. Um, and one person I haven't mentioned that I really want to give a shout out to uh, is our assistant director, Wilna Jumis Taylor. Uh, she runs our creative campus projects, which uh, uh, has over, over, 60 events a semester, uh, and she also is in charge of our racial equity and arts leadership program, which is what you came to Nashville and spoke in, and uh, it's, it's now in its fifth year, and it's making an enormous impact. So having this highly motivated staff who are given the uh, free reign to use their own creativity uh, gives us all strength and supports us as a creative community. Wow. Well, Jay Clayton, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you.